Surprising you didn't try fit it yourself. I, I took many a project on in the last two years out of thinking, that'll be fine. And I've learned, get an expert to do it. Oh I no. Was, I was in Mexico. You know what? It got a lot better looking still. And it was very good looking. So here she is. What's up guys and welcome back to another episode of the Drift Games Vlog. <sighs> Cold night in Ireland again, but it's heating up because you guys remember my red PS13. We haven't seen that on the channel in a while because we had some big plans, we were waiting on some parts. But we brought it to our boys here at AAA Customs. You might remember them as AAA Competitions. Well, they got so good at doing up cars, basically for raffle, that they decided to just do them up in general and become a body shop that can do awesome modified cars. So we're gonna catch up with Dave, we're gonna show you some of the work that AAA have done already. This is a good little showcase, Davey. I heard about a lot of breakages and I, and I kind of felt like I had enough misery going on in my own life before I was going to ask you guys what was going on in yours. But this broke. That broke, yeah. The shaft snapped in that. Half shaft. Strange, but they're very small wheels. I wonder why they were putting so much pressure on them. <laughs> so this is a 335. You guys have seen this on the channel. We've done a video on it before. Beautiful red Supra. This one still just perfect, I think, in every way, but broken as well. Yeah, the engine blew on that. The engine blew? Yeah, I was driving it. Oh I no. Was, I was in Mexico and I was doing about 300, 320 kilometers an hour. There was an M3 in front of me that happened to be going very fast as well. And uh, well, I just seen it. Mexico, so we're just it's yeah. like the Autobahn. Sounds like a race. Exactly. It was, it was like a race. <laughs> we were just, yeah, we were just going. It happened to be going very fast side by side with me on the motorway. But anyway, we won't say anything too much about that. So the engine went? Yeah. Big puff of white smoke at the back of it and just <laughs> oil everywhere. So yeah. So basically, what you said is you'd had them finished. And he went, well, we've nothing to do now. We'll just break a few of them. And then we've got more stuff to talk about. Um, but it still looks great, even though it has an engine on these. And this thing now, we haven't seen in a while. And from, you know what? It got a lot better looking still. And it was very good looking. But I felt, I kind of felt like the black and the white was nearly too kind of contrasty. It looked quite simple. But now the chrome wheels just look incredible. To be fair, the black was, uh, was a mistake anyway. Rick ordered the wrong wheels, <laughs> <laughs> believe it or not. He, he had ordered silver with a polished lip to start with, but then, no, sorry, he had ordered black and black to start with, but then changed the order a week later to silver and polished lip for obviously that look, and uh, they still came black. But then we've seen and the black. these the same wheels? wheels? Yeah, exactly, same wheels, yeah. So how, so these are polished again? Yeah, they were sent off. To get dipped and polished, and then the centers were sent off to be dipped in powder coat. It looks deadly. And one thing that I did like about it is you changed the rear end on this as well. Yeah, it's a, so it's got these kind of oh, wow. spots on the back, which I think were missing from it. It was a bit yeah. strange at the back because what I thought was it looked great, but the back arches sort of looked like they weren't, they were just floating in midair kind of on their own. It's when the car was driving, obviously when it's aired up a little bit, it's, it was just missing something, but now it looks, looks a million times better on the road now, damn it. So you've taken basically what is a full, very expensive body kit, and then you've had to add to that body kit to make it make sense. This thing looks absolutely insane. I still remember the first day this, we saw this and it rolled out, it was just like, for, an, for a car in Ireland, it is absolutely crazy. And to see the project through from an idea that's probably a bad idea to start, all the way through to the end, I think it looks incredible. So, as you guys can see, no issue for the boys here to be working on stuff that isn't conventional. So. Not just your regular resprays, not just that kind of stuff, but if you want to make something special. And with the PS13 I had, which the front bumper is here, you guys can remember it. Um, it was a lovely car, but I kind of want to make it my own. I have another PS13, which we, a lot of people say is just the perfect PS13. So I didn't want to make another perfect PS13. I wanted something that was stanced, low, cool, but I could still skid it about a bit and still have some fun on the road. And the roads are really bad in Ireland, so I'm not going to go overboard with it. But I still wanted it to look very cool, and I know that fitting aftermarket body kits is quite a difficult task. So Dave has had all that misery for about 
15 years now. Yeah, day, you know? probably, yeah. So I brought it down to him. So it's in the other shed. So let's go have a look. Surprising you didn't try fit it yourself. I, I took many a project on in the last two years out of thinking that'll be fine. And I've learned get an expert to do it. Because what happens is I'll do it, then I'll mess it up, then it'll end up here anyway. Well, so I'm, I'm glad you said it anyway. Because <laughs> <laughs> I'd have to bring it there and go, look, look what I messed up. Can you put more on after I've cut it all off? So here she is. What's up guys, I wanna take a second to thank one of our partners here at Drift Games, Mobile One Oil. We use Mobile One in all of our street cars and our drift cars, and even the Mobile One Mustang, which runs 900 horsepower, does so reliably because we use the best lubricants from Mobile One. Check out their full range now, get them in your car, and stay on track. Dave, this was a complete car. Like, no, it was no. ready to go, it was roadworthy, it was everything. Anyway, <laughs> the inspiration for this car is I was up late one night watching YouTube and you guys might know Jimmy Oaks in the US has a 1JZ PS13. And I just looked at that car and went, that is how a PS13 yeah. should look. I completely agree. 15s, stock body, low, very good look for the car. But it's not my style. And I know it's more nostalgic and people want to make everything look like it's old now. But I just wanted something that was so wide, so stanced. So what we've gone with here is Origin Labo 75 mil fenders front and back. They're the biggest fenders I could get. Um, we did have another option and I'm going to give a shout out to Darren Wiles who's a friend of ours from the British Drift Championship. He had custom fenders that were 125 mil front fenders which would have worked perfectly. But I'm never going to get rear fenders that are going to match it. So for a drift car to have a wider stance on the front works. But for a road car, I think it needs to be more balanced. So these are 75 mils, and this is a D-Max Type 2 body kit. And now I'm gonna hand you over to Dave for all of the misery of how all of that's <laughs> gonna to come together because it's not as easy as just buying, a lot of people think, just buy a few kits, throw them on, put a bit of paint on, everything will work out great. Yeah. Doesn't work like that. No, that's definitely not the case. Like even, I suppose, where do you start? Like, when you're buying- <laughs> It's been a long few days. <laughs> yeah, it has. When you're buying panels, like the back arch there, that you're putting onto a panel that's already there, it's, it's obviously hard work, but it's not as hard as when you're buying a full panel that you're bolting one off and bolting it on. So obviously there's a bit of work in fitting wings, spurious wings, onto it to try to get panel gaps and all right, which is, well, see, that's, it is this hard. Is the problem. No matter what body kit you buy, you're taking a standard metal panel, yeah. a standard metal bonnet, and you're trying to make this fit in the middle, which is yeah. very, very difficult because, you know, molds and everything else, you know, good kits, bad kits, whatever they may be, no fiberglass kit just fits straight on a car because obviously it's the way it's stored, heat, it can contract, it can be lying down on the ground with something on top of it for some time. And even the way I stored it probably in the last couple of weeks could have changed the whole kit, whatever. We're not actually learning something. We're learning, Josh. I remember when you used to send us a kit off and say, just fit it for a few hours. <laughs> I'm the forever optimist. But, but I'm now starting to realize that being optimistic isn't enough. There's still a lot of work involved. The big thing on this car though is, the wheels are huge. <laughs> the big right? wheels, the wheels. Well, the wheels. So Way huge. this is what started this whole process because the wheels that were on it were really nice, but I wanted mega dished wheels. And because these wheels came up for sale and I really like them, I just like the fact that they're polished and have the gold bolts and stuff. I was like, this is perfect look, old school kind of style. I was like, excellent. And then I put them on the car and realized that they were about a foot and a half wider than the car. So to get these you, to you, work- Wait, 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 you were optimistic as well. And you said, a bit of camber will get these to fit. <laughs> <laughs> and they're not joking, they were again, about half Again, my foot. optimism was met, met with a big freight train of reality. <laughs> so basically, uh, we're now trying to get them to fit, but as you said, there had to be a lot of work even just to get the wheel to turn on the front. Well, basically, when, when the car came down first, the wheel turned and the wheel's not bolted on there. But I'd say, I'd say that was full lock. Like, <laughs> the, the I say it was. Now, already in here, we can turn it that way. That's you know, enough. The next issue, now we're still gonna have to be trained here and all obviously, but the next issue we have uh, is there. Uh, so that's where we're gonna run into problems. <laughs> but <clears throat> I had to do the same thing in my S15, so I kind of know how to do it. The only difference is my S15 wing stops here, whereas obviously this is lower, so we'll just take a bit more trimming and thinking. 
So how to yeah. make it work? Because we obviously want the car to be functional, that it can actually turn, which yeah. is a, which <laughs> the, which would be a big advantage. And it's, I'm not putting the car on air. It's on BC Racing coilovers. I want to keep it on coilovers. I don't want to do air on it. I don't want it to be a show car. So the idea that was, we were talking to Dave on the phone about was that I don't want this car to be perfect. He can make it perfect. He can make this a show winner. But I already have a show winner. I want this to be more rough around the edges. I want it just to look cool, but I don't want to be afraid of taking it for a skid at the track. I don't want to be afraid of driving it like a performance car. I don't want it just to be a show pony because the spec on this car is actually really good. It's a really nice sort of street drift car. So I want it to just look cool, but I don't want to go overboard on making it perfect. So there's no point in sitting this PS13 beside the other PS13 yeah, and yeah. saying, you know, you're only going to find imperfection. So what Dave wants to do is make it perfect. I'm trying to wind him back a little and say, it doesn't need to be so perfect because we're probably going to blow a bumper off this at some point or hit a speed bump or whatever. Yeah. Um, that's the type of car. It's going to be a driven car. It's going to be all over the country, all over Europe if we can, taking out road trips. So I don't want it to be too perfect because the first crack or break, I'll be so annoyed with yeah. the work that you guys put in. So it's sort of a compromise we're looking at on this one. And Camber is also going to have to be involved because I'm looking that's at the back here. <laughs> still having troubles. Maybe get a camera space over. So if you want to, <laughs> there you. That's what, that's what you need. So the spec on these wheels, just for to show you how ridiculous this is, these are 18 by 13 minus 22s, which is the biggest wheel, one of the biggest wheels that's ever been uh, in Ireland. That's what they are imported through JDM Distro, who gave us. They said it's the biggest wheels they've ever had. They actually left the tires on them, which they don't, normally don't, because they just wanted to see how hilarious it looked with the tires on. So that's the problem. So we will need camber and we're probably gonna to have to go smaller tires, I think. Look, actually we need to actually take the wheel off and see it. <laughs> like, <laughs> just, that's ridiculous. Just, just put a hand there for perspective. Maybe that's all, dude. Well, well then we can do the, we can do the, what's the classic phone in the, in the like this is a, an iPhone, what, what's the 11? Pro, so it's like the biggest iPhone you can get. And it makes light work of it. So it is a very big wheel. But it's the look I wanted. So we can put some, it has adjustable camber arms on the car, so we can put some camber on it. But what we're going to do now is get onto the tire box, our good friends at the tire box, who have every type of tire. And we're going to change these because these are 295 30s 18s, and we're going to change them to 285 yeah, 30 I think, 18s. I think best, yeah. So a little bit more stretch. That's quite a lot of stretch already, Dave. Yes. <laughs> you know, realistically, it's like 255, but like, that's just undrivable then. So I'm just trying to get any millimeters we can get on this is going to help in the future. Hey, every millimetre counts. Yeah, so... As you I, said last night. <laughs> 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 so on the back, we've, we've still got decisions to be made here. So we have two options. Two looks. We can put the D-Max bumper on, which is one option, or we can put the stock rear bumper on and put a diffuser on it. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to leave this up to you guys. Which should we do? Low bumper, D-Max Type 2, really, really low bumper to the ground, or should we do the stock plastic bumper with a big diffuser, aggressive diffuser on the back of it? Let me know in the comments. I'm going to let you guys decide that because I can't make up my mind on that whatsoever. Yeah, uh, definitely he thinks diffuser. <laughs> I think maybe rear bumper. So we're I think have... that could have something to do with there's a bit more work in the, bum uh, the <laughs> bumper. So from that perspective, the car is going to be painted um, this color. So it's going to go back to this color. I really like this. It's actually a Lexus color. Um, it's like a kind of a dark metallic red, which I think is quite nice on the car. And because all the rest of the car is painted that color, I think this will be a lot easier. But yeah. I genuinely like the colour, so I'm not actually too pushed. I know when you go this far, sometimes you go, well, I've pretty much changed all the panels on the car, I might as well. But I think it actually works well with that. So this is going to be a bit of a, an over Christmas and New Year's project for, for Dave and, and Rick and the guys here at AAA. And this is the kind of stuff they do. So it's more or less, kind of not your average bodywork. Modified. I suppose that's yeah. one way of saying it. Just all modified stuff. Because again, a normal paint shop, most of them are fantastic at doing a repair or a respray or whatever, but this is a different, this is, I think it's not about uh, skill so much, it's about experience. Yeah. You know from building these cars over the last 10 or 15 years, what needs to be trimmed, that's gonna be, if that's gonna fall off in 20 minutes, that's not gonna work. And that's why your cars, the one thing I will say is you have a lot of show ponies, but they all drive to shows. Yeah, no, so they're, they're not a car that you just trailer there and leave there and go, that's great. Yeah. They drive and they all have performance mods, so they're actually performance cars still. That's what we want for this car, is that it still drives, it's still fast, it still does a skid, but it looks amazing doing it. And we're hoping then to put a little bit of a livery on it with the guys in Precision Tinted Graphics, but that's all to come in a future episode. So let me know what you think of the car so far, because I think this is gonna be one of the wildest PS13s in the country. And also because I own the other wildest one, 
I don't want to sit, it to sit in the garage beside it and look really ordinary. So I think it's going to be a different look, a more kind of street drift look, um, quite a mix of Japanese and US styles, which I'm always kind of fond of. And I'm really looking forward to it. So let me know what you think in the comments. Are you looking forward to seeing this car finished in the new year? Probably early in the new year, this car will be, will be kind of done and dusted and we'll be able to show you guys it on the road, which I'm really looking forward to. And uh, yeah, so the guys here at Triple A Customs, if you need any work done, get on to them. They love the misery by the oh, sounds of it. Love, 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 love the if you've got a wild idea or a wild project or you want to do something wild, like especially wide body stuff, pandem stuff, Liberty Walk stuff, that kind of level of stuff, even you know, the stuff that is very difficult to wrap your head around. They have so much experience doing it. You can see all the cool cars they've made in the past, so give them a shout. And I'm looking forward to coming back in the new year and seeing this thing all painted. So what I'm thinking of doing is, normally we'll jump in and watch the project as it goes. I think on this one, I think I prefer to come back when it's done. I think I want it to sit here, done, and just get that shutter open, reveal, because I've spent so long now, along the process of all the other cars that it almost drives me mad. I want to kind of leave this one here in capable hands, so the new year and the next time you guys are going to see it, the next time I see it, this thing is going to be on the street. So join us for that.